Welcome back today in our Sunday spotlight. A New Haven music teacher is in the running for a national award honoring an educator making a difference in the lives of students. That teacher is here with us today. But before we talk with him, check out New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarland's visit to Patrick Smith's classroom. One, two, three. Uh. The sounds coming from Patrick Smith's classroom blend into a smooth rhythm, forming a harmony and instilling a love of music. That's what you're looking for. Okay. That's what you're looking for. Okay, try again. That comes from the heart. If your heart is open, people will come in. And a lot of the students find safety here because they know that I will listen to them before I speak. And I just don't cast a judgment upon them based upon either how they look or how they walk in or how they act. It's that connection to the kids in his classroom at New Haven's Cooperative Arts and Humanities High School. It's a really sp safe space, so everyone's welcome here. Along with a lasting contribution to the field of music education, along with a commitment to keeping it alive in schools that finds Smith a semi-finalist for the Grammy's 2023 Music Educator Award. I'm astoundingly honored to be in the top 25. So, you know, it started with over 1,200 people nationwide. An honor that's not lost on his students. I feel like he should get it. I feel like he deserves it. He's been working hard. He makes me proud. Like, he's a good teacher. He's really a good teacher. But for some, like Liana Baez, He's not just a teacher. I see him as more than a teacher, more like a father figure to me, because he's very um, important to me, and I look up to him a lot. Before starting at Co-op 26 years ago, Smith had a long career, touring all over the world as a professional musician. The first gig I ever played professionally was in Seattle in uh, 1970, I want to say 1975 or 6. Uh, the Rolling Stones came through town and they were hiring extra people to play on the side. Now he gets his satisfaction by molding these future musicians. Can we just play the song? No. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be in the concert. This is, the, this is called education right here. Okay, so do it again. Okay. What am I going to say? Do it again. A playful give and take with this jazz band class. Happy to be back in person full time after the pandemic took a toll the past few years. We kept the music alive through the technology. Like the band and choir kids learning songs, all recording their parts at home before getting edited together for a final piece. Smith says he works his students hard, whether it's his system of practicing scales and changes without reading music. And they begin to see it. Instead of just pushing the buttons and hoping to get the right notes, they see the shape and they see the pattern. And they go, oh, I can play this. Or prepping for an upcoming concert. But for this educator and his students, the end game is evident. All you have to do is stop and listen. Hard work and, and loving doing it because the payoff for them is the satisfaction of knowing that they sound good. Reporting in New Haven, Matt McFarland for CT22. And we now welcome Patrick Smith here to Studio A. Thank you for being with us. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on this big honor. Uh, 1,200 people whittled down to 25. And, and in February, we'll find out who the winner is. You talked in the end of Matt's piece there about what you hope the students are getting out of it. But what are you getting out of it? Well, I'll tell you, what I'm getting out of it is the validation of uh, life's work. And it feels really great. And I, at my age, I guess I can say, you know, it's wonderful to be seen. But more than that, it's just the recognition of the, the love and the caring that the students in my school get. And the way that in every art that we teach, the same sort of thing is happening. And I'm, you know, I'm, it's wonderful to have it recognized by the Grammys, but it's school-wide. I have to really spread the credit around. Your whole life, I was doing a little reading on you, music has been an important theme, especially in your childhood. You talked about the professional gig starting in the 70s, but before that, I mean, music was something that got you through some tough times and some it, moving around and things really like did. that. It really did. My mother was a pianist, and I kind of learned at her feet. I learned to play by ear, and I started my first little band when I was in fourth grade. We were called the Stanley Steamers, named after my, my teacher. And I went on from there, and uh, through high school I played. I got into college, and I played, and I began playing professionally when I was 13 with an orchestra in Washington State, where I grew up. And when I moved out here to go to graduate school, I just began working out here, and I discovered that I loved teaching and made my way into the teaching profession out of the performance profession so much. And I've been at co-op now for 26 years. Working at a school uh, in a city, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have students who you can say, as much as music was important to me as a kid, it's important to this kid right now. Do you feel that, that connection? I mean, one of the 
young students in there said she feels like you're a father figure. <laughs> yeah. do, do you feel yeah. that connection? Absolutely. And, you know, it's easy to point at a student that has gone on to be successful in music, but I'd really like to look at the students who are not as passionate about music but have other passions in their lives. And the discipline of studying music the way that we do it gives them a, a set of skills that guides them successfully into other areas of their lives as well. And so it's wonderful working with all the kids. There was a lot in Matt's piece about it being an open, a safe space, mm -hmm. a, a welcoming environment in your class. Is there more being taught there than just music? Absolutely. One of the things that I pride myself on and my co-teachers pride themselves on is the ability to wait and listen before we speak to the students, to find out where the students are coming from today, not where we think they ought to be. Because the only way you can work with someone is to meet them where they are and then kind of hold figurative hands and guide, guide through the, the, the labyrinth of education. So it has so much to do with the personal connection. It has so much to do with recognizing the, the need for recognition and the acceptance of the, the kids right exactly where they are. So we talked about the numbers, 25 teachers, 25 cities, 18 different states. There is uh, Wayne Splett Stozer from Torrington is yep. another Connecticut honoree, which is pretty cool to have two from our state. It's amazing. It is amazing. What do you hope, if someone's watching this show, maybe they've never heard of this award, they haven't heard of your school, mm -hmm. is there something you hope they take away from this about maybe the importance of what you and, and Wayne and these other finalists are doing? Absolutely, and I, I'm actually in contact with Wayne and we're planning some sort of a project for the future. But the takeaway here is that the arts are so important. Every academic area finds its expression in the arts. And when you find great sports players, great musicians, great uh, politicians, great, you know, television people who raise the bar to the level of art in what they are doing. They've taken all the STEM uh, subjects, which are of course important, and taken them to look through the lens of the arts to find that higher level. And so everything in education is great, but we have to support the arts because that is what makes the rest of it work. And do you think sometimes when, when, when pencils are sharpened and budgets are created, that's a message that has to be remembered? It has to be remembered that way because every person that's great at something had some kind of art in their background. And, and it gives you an opportunity to let these students express maybe not that they're great at the saxophone or the keyboard, but that they're great at something. Exactly. And then through this process, they discover what they're great at. And that's the whole point. Do you have any idea over your years how many students you've taught? Oh, boy. Hundreds. Probably a couple thousand. And uh, right. then you figure there's 25 other teachers out there teaching as many young lives yeah. and touching as many young lives as you. Uh, certainly a great message uh, that this award gives. Um, just we have about 30 seconds left. Any closing thoughts? I know in February we'll find out who the big winner is, but clo clothing, closing thoughts on being nominated. I'm, I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure it's a great honor for all of us to be part of this recognition and the tens of thousands of students that we've been gifted the impact upon. And I just pray that you know, we can continue in this process, enliven the arts, strengthen education, and support our kids. All right. Well, we appreciate you being with us. Good luck at the award, but I think your students have already, uh, would already say you're already, you, you've won it in their hearts. Thank you very much, Patrick, for being with us here on CT22. Thank you, sir.